have had the experience of being in a meeting with someone, a peer or a superior, subordinate, um, and having a discussion about a subject. And the words go on, the way, words may go on for half an hour. And uh, they go back and forth. And at the end of the conversation, we walk out and walk out into the hall and suddenly stop and say to ourselves, what was that really about? What did he really say? And what did he really mean? And sometimes we heard what he said, we heard the words, but we don't really believe what he said. Uh, we felt, if we recall it, we, were, we felt in the middle of the meeting itself a disparity, a discomfort within ourselves. We're marvelous sensing instruments. All of us are marvelous sensing instruments. We have a great deal going for us. We not only have our ears, we have our eyes, we have our sense of touch, uh, we have our, our feelings, we have uh, all sorts of things that are going for us. What we can do is to tune in to our own feelings of discomfort and to report on those, to share with each other you know, what those feelings are. Whatever an organization accomplishes, immeasurable quantities of communication, verbal and nonverbal, go into the achieving of it. The higher the level of management, the more exclusively the job is likely to be communication. Oh, good morning, Tom. Oh, How are you? Nice good to see you. see you. Getting here a little early, aren't you? Oh, I got a lot of paperwork yeah. to do. A lot of paperwork. It is vital for successful managers to realize that their nonverbal behavior can have as much effect as yeah, they I think I know what you mean. We've been allowing the department heads to sign their own requisition for outside services and supplies. Exactly. And I think they've been abusing that. Well, they certainly have. Now, would this be all right with you? Psychologist Albert Morabian says that we use our nonverbal behaviors to express three basic emotional sets and attitudes. The degree of liking and disliking we feel toward others, the degree of dominance or submissiveness we feel in a relationship, and the degree of responsiveness, the sheer amount of reaction, positive or negative or mixed, that other people arouse in us. Degrees of dominance and submissiveness are expressed in a variety of nonverbal ways. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Mr. Cahill. Morning, Patty. Morning, George. The same verbal greeting can convey distinctly different messages. Morning, Patty. The nonverbal channels, tone of voice, facial expression, eye contact, all express high liking, high responsiveness, and no indication of dominance or submissiveness. Morning, George. Tone of voice, facial expression, eye contact, all express low liking, low responsiveness, and a slight indication of dominance. Hey, Tom, listen, I think I got that R&D problem licked. Now, listen what we could do. Instead of putting those accounts under overhead, we make it part of the independent contractor agreement. You know, we might have to bend with those people a little, but they owe us a favor, and the bottom line is, they need our business, and I think they'll cooperate. Of course, I haven't mentioned the idea to any of them yet, but they already know we have a problem, and we just can't let it ride on forever. Whatever the words exchanged, only a person who felt himself lower in status would walk backward in order to keep the attention of another. And only one who felt himself of higher status would continue to walk forward while being addressed. Such distinctions are very real, but are almost never put into words. Uh, we're working on it. I think it's uh, um, good uh, when you get the figures, send up a memo, okay? Yeah, sure. See you later. Yeah, that's right. According to Dr. Morabian, the person of higher status must decide whether or not to initiate casual conversation with persons of lower status. Well, <laughs> good morning. Americans generally are particularly uncomfortable with the realities of status and position. Attempts to ease the discomfort often only increase it. This must be the slowest elevator in the state. Okay, <laughs> sure it's slow. 
A person of high status assumes and is granted more free space around him than a person of lower status. Whatever our status, each of us carries a kind of bubble of personal space from one encounter to another. Out to about a foot and a half, most Americans reserve this space for intimate conversation, whispers, and secrets. From a foot and a half to about four feet, normal, casual interactions. Beyond about four feet, out to the limit of hearing, impersonal transactions. Well, finally. When crowded into small places, the violation of intimate personal space makes us uncomfortable. In an elevator, people typically go silent and fix their gaze on the floor indicator panel. 